Hey everyone and welcome. Today we have a special guide for you where we're going to break down the world's best Ezreal, SKT Teddy, and how he stomps lane phase while getting camped. He does this by using a special kind of inting strategy that works in his favor during laning phase, which we will get into shortly. Don't worry if you don't play Ezreal, while we'll be talking about a bunch of his mechanics, there's a ton to learn for everyone to rapidly improve their lane phase, even if they're constantly getting ganked in lane. With that said, let's quickly break down the matchup and get into the gameplay. Ezreal and Zillion want to use their superior range to pressure their opponents and get priority on the wave. In doing this, they can shove the wave which will give them more minions and health to work with to counter Nautilus's all-ins and land more harass when their opponents are under the tower. To achieve this, Ezreal will want to do the following. Mission 1, play aggressive. Ezreal wants to push forward and land as much harass as possible with Qs and autos. Not AFK and farm safely, since he can play aggressive while still being safe. He can do this by executing mission 2, save E for hooks. This one's Ezreal specific and allows him to get away with more than other ADCs when it comes to stepping forward to land harass versus hook champions. Then for mission 3, get a clean reset at 850 gold for tier. Getting a meaningful item on your first back is always a worthy mission for any ADC, but Ezreal is even more important because it dictates the pace of his entire game as he must stack for mana immune as soon as possible. Nautilus and Kaiser's game plan will be to look for all-ins with his hook, specifically onto the Zillion so that Ezreal doesn't E out of it. Any all-in should work in their favor if they're not too low, since Ezreal is playing teleport with Kaiser playing heal. Alright, let's get into the gameplay. As the lane starts, both sides get there at the same time since they didn't have to leash. Teddy lands his first Q onto Nautilus. He does this in a way that we're going to see over and over. He fires it just to the side of him so that if Nautilus dodges, he will hit the wave anyway, guaranteeing value from his skill shot. Now, in the next few seconds, Teddy is about to learn an important piece of information that will totally change the way that level 1 will play out. Take a look and see if you can tell what it is. Alright, so this is a pretty basic thing that most players don't consider, playing dynamically in the first three levels. We just saw Nautilus reveal that he did not start hook since he used W to walk up for a Targons without taking damage. This now means that both Zillion and Ezreal don't have to worry about getting all in at level 1 and can play much more aggressively beyond their minions. Similar to how you wouldn't have to worry about Morgana Bind if you see her start W to wave clear. But you can also gather this information before a spell is even used versus certain champions. Such as clicking on Thresh and checking if they have Flay on their hotbar below their player frame. If they have that, then they started Flay. If not, then they started Hook. Anyway, Kaiser has a slight minion lead at this point, which puts him first in the race to level 2. However, Teddy executes on mission 1 and walks around to pressure them off, to which the opposing team has no answer due to Nautilus demoting himself to Alistar status at level 1 with the W skill. With this slight minion lead that Teddy has, most players would sit here in the middle of the lane and wait for the next wave to arrive. The problem with that is that Teddy would just lose his tempo on the wave and reset the race to level 2, as the experience would be evened out. Instead, he escorts his casters to the next wave, using the time it takes for Kaiser to kill these to deal damage to the opposing wave, keeping him ahead in experience. In this case, this was only really possible because Nautilus is cosplaying Alistair's level 1 and otherwise could have hooked a zillion here for an all-in, but this concept is still relevant to keep in mind for most situations. At this point, Nautilus and Kaiser back up, knowing that if they stick around, they're at risk of getting level 2'd by Teddy. They crash a wave into the tower, but respect the all-in potential as Nautilus hits level 2. We wanted to give a quick mention of how both bot lanes correctly respected experience as they leveled up. In low elo, the Nautilus Kaiser would more likely be standing around here and lose half their health to a predictable level spike from Teddy. And then again, most low elo players stick around in this area trying to harass and get plates, while their opponent will hook them into tower as their minions die. As a third wave arrives, Teddy and Zillion keep pushing. There could be an argument to let the wave push towards them and freeze as Gragas is bot side, which would keep them both safe from getting all in with the possibility to land a gank himself. However, in doing this, they would concede control over getting an advantage and placing it in the hands of their unpredictable jungler, Gragas, essentially playing to get carried. So instead, they keep pushing, which is the better choice here. They'll have a larger wave to defend them from all ins, and their opponent will have less minions to block Ezreal's Q. Nautilus takes this opportunity as they're pushing forward to look for an engage. Unfortunately for him, Teddy pulls off a really sweet move to counter this. 
he moves in front of his zillion and tanks the hook and then ease out for mission 2. This is way more important than it may look, because if that hook hits zillion, it would cost him his flash or at least half of his health. This heroic move comes at a cost though. It made Teddy oom um with his Eon cooldown just as they get ganked by the enemy graves. Let's see how this plays out. Alright, so that was super close. If he had hit that Q onto Kai'Sa, he would have actually traded kills in this situation, which is insane. Rolling it back when Grave showed up though, why do you think that Teddy moved forward instead of trying to escape with his flash? So most players would run away here and if Teddy did that and flashes, he can maybe escape. But there's potential for Graves to also flash on him and Teddy would die anyway. Despite this gank, Teddy has the instant awareness to recognize his win condition. If we remember back to the long forgotten mission 3, the difference between Ezreal with and without tier is massive. He only has 760 gold and needs 850, so he moves forward knowing full well that he will die, but knowing that if he kills these creeps, he can control the lane despite being down 2 kills. What is perhaps equally as impressive is the way that he threatens to escape by moving up. This forces Graves to immediately path to collapse, giving him a 1v2 instead of a 1v3. Without that unfortunate missed Q, this would have also translated into a kill. Now, while we can't all have insane decision making like Teddy, we can definitely think about item spikes and how important their timings are, especially on a champion like Ezreal. But this would be the same for how you would want to be mindful for basing for a BS sword as Caitlyn, or a Vamp Scepter on Draven. Most other Ezreals here, perhaps even Challenger players, would run straight to the tower and get a much worse recall of. This would have them come back to lane via teleport without their tier, which would likely snowball them into a series of unfortunate events. Like Ezreal going oom, um, and then getting shoved in, losing tower plays, losing dragon, etc. Basically the average game for most Ezreals who have little to no lane presence. Teddy however, TPs back to lane with his tier and keeps shoving and harassing a whole bunch for mission 1. This keeps Nautilus and Kai'Sa low on health, making any all-ins difficult for them to pull off, which is their win condition. It's probably worth noting that even though Teddy did get his tier, Kai'Sa got 2 kills, so she's on a BF sword right now. However, since Teddy's Ezreal is so insane, Kai'Sa never gets an opportunity to trade orders with her damage advantage, and Nautilus never gets to land a hook, so Teddy is just crushing lane regardless. And we want to point out that this all looks ridiculously easy. It's definitely not, and Teddy's mechanics are playing a massive factor in this lane phase. Even most professional ADCs can only dream of playing Ezreal like Teddy and Def can, so we might as well shine a light on Teddy during Worlds since he's so fun to watch. And it's not hard to back up our own point. In the first day of group stage at Worlds, we can see Jackie Love try to E forward against this exact matchup to try and land her ass, then he immediately dies to Nautilus, failing mission 2. Teddy pulls off the same move, but does it just to the side of his melee minion to block the hook, again landing crucial damage, and it all looks too easy. All of his hard work is paying off. Zillion lands a great double stun, and both of his opponents are already at half health thanks to how proactive they've been without getting caught, so Teddy follows up for an easy 2v2. Which doesn't turn out to be a 2v2 at all, as usual, but he does cash in on 2 kills regardless. At this point, despite being ganked twice, Teddy is up 600 gold thanks to the pressure that he's generated, and he's gained a significant minion advantage and landed a ton of harass with Klepto. A couple of minutes later, he continues doing Teddy things and rains fire upon his opponent, randomly scoring kills when they didn't expect the damage, and he ends up crushing this game, finishing 18-5 against Kaisa's 6-9 despite getting camped in lane. Now you may be thinking that this matchup was totally unbalanced because of the Ezreal pick. While we've already seen Jackie Love screw up the Ezreal counter pick into Nautilus, let's run through what the Nautilus Kaiser could have done differently. So while it is true that Ezreal Zillion should win this lane if they play well and don't get caught by hooks, if he wasn't versus Teddy, Nautilus had the right idea by looking for all ends, especially when they were pushed up to the tower. At level 2 however, they backed off just in time, and then at level 3, Teddy made the next level move and blocked hook for Zillion. If this hit, it would have changed the pace of the lane, likely forcing flash where later Nautilus could flash hook the Zillion with no response, and so on. Basically, it's up to the Nautilus to land hooks onto Zillion or onto Ezreal without E. If these land, then they would easily win all ins. Teddy just never allowed that to happen. Alright, that's it for this one. Let us know what you thought of this guide and if you would like us to keep up the world's hype going into worlds, or if you would like to see something else. 
Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.